1998, the year of that one Godzilla movie with the Puff Daddy song, Half-Life, and also the year a new player in the gaming industry began to take form. It all began with Seamus Blackley. After producing the colossal failure Jurassic Park Trespasser, Seamus left video games behind and became a program manager at Microsoft. That is, until word got around of Sony's PlayStation 2, a video game console set to rival the graphics of computer games and a Trojan horse for movie entertainment in living rooms. To Microsoft CEO Bill Gates, that was a direct threat. At first, Bill Gates turned to the likes of Sega to join forces, and even approached Sony's then-CEO Nobuyuki Ide about a partnership, but to no avail. And then, Seamus Blackley was stricken with inspiration. Microsoft should go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Sony and make its own video game console. Seamus pitched it to Kevin Backus, project manager at DirectX, then turned to Ed Freeze, the dude in charge of the games division at Microsoft. Next up, the head honcho himself, Bill Gates. They pitched a device that was powered by Windows technology, but with one sole focus, to play games. And like that, Bill Gates gave them his blessing. Damn, Bill! By 1999, Microsoft's console was well underway. But what's a video game console without games? In 2000, Xbox acquired the once Apple-focused game studio Bungie for $30 million and tasked them to pivot away from its open-world third-person action game into a first-person shooter for its upcoming console, a genre that hadn't been truly mastered on consoles nor championed since GoldenEye for the N64. It was an acquisition that would help define the console's legacy. And if you're interested in learning more about that, you can watch an entire episode of our show Remember When all about when Halo was originally going to be a Mac game. Link in the description below. The development of the Xbox was first publicly revealed to the world at the Game Developers Conference in 2000 by Bill Gates, revealing a giant shiny metallic X along with its tagline, The Future of Console Gaming. But it wouldn't be until early 2001 where we'd get our first look at the actual console design at the Consumer Electronics Show with the help of Dwayne The Rock Johnson. So if you really want to smell what The Rock is cooking uh, to, uh, to uh, a degree you've never thought you would before, you're going to get the Xbox. The Xbox launched on November 15th for $299. It was the first video game console to stand shoulder to shoulder with computer tech, using a GPU powered by Nvidia and an internal PC hard drive, which was a first for a console and added to its iconic tank-like girth. Speaking of girth, it launched with this Colossus controller, now nicknamed the Duke. It was nearly three times the size of PS2's DualShock 2, just for context. The Xbox included direct online access and could play DVDs, well, sort of. It, it only worked as long as you had the DVD movie playback kit, which was an extra 20 bucks. The Xbox sold a million units in three weeks, a huge success for a first-time console. Some notable games it launched with was Oddworld Munch's Odyssey, Dead or Alive 3, Project Gotham, and of course, the game that helped establish an iconic, long-running franchise for the Xbox. Halo Combat Evolved. Halo Combat Evolved was a massive critical success, changing the perception of first-person shooters on consoles, setting a new precedent for the genre, and introducing it to an entirely new audience of gamers by cultivating a new culture around LAN parties that took basements and college dorm rooms by storm. Very quickly, Halo became synonymous with the Xbox, making Master Chief's helmet the face of the brand. In 2002, Xbox Live was launched. It was the service that changed online gaming forever and a business model its competitors would later adapt. Forget that, let's play! The service came bundled with a headset, a requirement that single-handedly influenced a generation of online gaming culture with a, uh, uh, a very colorful vocabulary. Master of monkey poo. Come on, little boy. Later that year, Xbox launched in Japan, and with it, introduced the world to the Controller S, a smaller, less ergonomically insulting controller than the Duke. It continued to sell well in North America, but in Japan, barely scraped by with 850,000 units by the end of that year. Additionally, the Xbox was very expensive to produce and lost money with every unit sold. 
But in a drastic and daring move, Microsoft decided to make the console $100 cheaper, putting it at $199, the same price as the PS2, in hopes to make up for lost ground against Sony's astronomically successful PlayStation 2, which had sold 50 million units worldwide by the end of 2002. Still, while Xbox struggled to keep up, killer apps like Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell helped boost sales in the end of that year. In 2003, just two years after the Xbox's release, Microsoft had already begun planning on the next console, codenamed Xenon. While the next generation Xbox was being developed in the background, at 2004's E3, Peter Moore famously revealed the launch date of Halo 2 by getting it tattooed on his arm. Halo 2 sold 2.4 million units in its first 24 hours. It made 125 million in sales, making it the most successful of any entertainment product in history at the time, and the highest selling OG Xbox game of all time. It also came out just in time for Xbox Live to go global, further catapulting the service to success. 2004 was also the launch of Xbox Live Arcade, a digital video game storefront paving the way for downloading additional content for games, including Halo 2. In May 2005, the Xbox 360 was unveiled on MTV with Elijah Wood and performances by bands like The Killers. Xbox 360 launched for $399. It had an interchangeable external hard drive, it had faceplate customization, and a wireless controller that would set the standard for all Xbox controllers to follow. This time around, Microsoft opted for a sleeker white and gray look in comparison to the black cinder block of its predecessor. It was also the first console to implement gamer tags and one of its most influential features, the achievement system. Achievements set a precedent for even the likes of Valve, which added its own achievement system to Steam in 2007, and then Sony followed suit with trophies for the PlayStation 3. Xbox Live Arcade also made a huge splash on the Xbox 360, opening the gates to a wider market of games, most notably indie games. 2006 brought us Xbox's other defining flagship franchise, Gears of War. It won many awards, including GameSpot's Game of the Year. It sold 1 million units in its first two weeks, making it the fastest selling Xbox 360 game at the time. And then, at E3 that same year, Peter Moore did the thing he does again, revealing another tattoo release date for Grand Theft Auto 4. All was going so well for Microsoft's second console, until nine months after its launch. Some faulty Xbox 360s are literally melting down while running certain games. A big holiday headache for Microsoft, but Nintendo and Sony appear to be grinning like elves. By August 2006, there was an influx of consoles being returned after they'd abruptly stopped working following the flashing of three red lights around its power button, earning notoriety as the Red Ring of death. The cause, at first, was difficult to narrow down and pinpoint. Head of Xbox at the time, Robbie Bach, concluded it was the fault of the console's engineering, claiming that Microsoft took a design-first approach and as a result compromised what was under the hood. The fiasco resulted in a costly disaster. Microsoft set aside $1 billion to extend the Red Ring of Death warranty coverage to three years. Meanwhile, there was a war on disc formats, HD DVD versus Blu-ray. The PlayStation 3 utilized Blu-ray technology, which Sony co-owned, making the PS3 double as a Blu-ray player, an identical strategy Sony used for the PS2 doubling as a DVD player. Microsoft, on the other hand, went the HD DVD route. They released an external HD DVD player for it, priced at $199. But by 2008, Toshiba, which was the principal supporter for the HD DVD format, announced it discontinue HD DVD support in 2008. Days later, Microsoft uh, discontinued its own player. 2007 introduced the sleeker, slightly more compact Xbox Elite and Halo 3. This was the year 343 Industries, the Halo-only studio, was formed, and also the departure of Halo's original developer, Bungie, though Bungie continued to develop Halo ODST and Halo Reach. 2008 brought us one of the most unsuspecting titles to cause a ripple through the industry, a little game to come out on the Xbox Live Arcade called Braid. 
It is among the top 10 highest rated Xbox 360 games according to Metacritic, and it was the second best selling Xbox Live arcade title that year, right next to Castle Crashers. Braid was among the first indie games to shift the industry's perception of independently made games, paving the way for games to follow such as Limbo, Super Meat Boy, and Fez. 2009 was the first public mention that Microsoft was working on the motion and voice controlled device, the Kinect, a project that had started several years prior in 2005. The Nintendo Wii sent a shockwave through the gaming industry with its revolutionary controller released back in 2006, tapping into new gaming demographics from children to grandparents. Though a few years late, Microsoft was ready to unveil its own motion control device. The Kinect's intent was to eliminate the controller altogether, competing head-on with the Wii. And the reveal of the Kinect brought this wonderful moment along with it. You ever wonder what the bottom of an Avatar shoe looks like? Well, bam! There it is. Kinect was released in 2010, alongside the Xbox 360S. After only 60 days, the Kinect had sold 8 million units. And by 2011, rumors circulated Microsoft was well underway on its next console. Despite the enormous misstep of the Red Ring of Death, the Xbox 360 sold exceptionally well and was immensely influential thanks to its achievement implementation, Xbox Live Arcade, and its success in popularizing indie games and enabling their console distribution. Xbox 360 sold over 80 million units by the end of the generation, nearly four times more than its predecessor, and just hairs less than Sony's PlayStation 3, despite both having lost the sales race to Nintendo's Wii. Microsoft was officially cemented in the console market as a major force to be reckoned with, but that also meant a lot of pressure for what was next. Following the release of the last and final iteration of the Xbox 360, the E model, Microsoft revealed the Xbox One in May 2013, and uh, people were uh, less than thrilled with what was presented that day. The Xbox One didn't seem too focused on gaming, but rather serving as an all-in-one entertainment hub. Even when Xbox announced the game Quantum Break, it had a TV-like thing integrated into it. It was also the announcement of the Halo TV show, where Ever that is today, though really it's definitely actually absolutely in development. On top of all of that, the console was pitched having loads of barriers and restrictions like having to be always online, no backwards compatibility, a restriction on used games, and Kinect was required with the console, heightening people's concerns of privacy with an always on camera microphone device front and center in their home. Oh, and Aaron Paul kept turning people's Xboxes on thanks to this ad. Xbox on. Yo. All of which was packaged for $499. Very quickly, the console was shrouded in controversy. It wasn't long before Xbox reversed most of its malign policies. At launch, the system did not require you to be always online and could play used games, but the damage had been done and the console's perception had been tarnished. Slowly, the tide began to shift in 2014 when Phil Spencer, former head of Microsoft Game Studios, was made the head of Xbox. Six months after the Xbox One's release, a version of the console was launched without the Kinect, making it $100 cheaper, putting it on par with the PlayStation 4. At E3 2015, Phil Spencer announced backwards compatibility for Xbox One, and the crowd exploded with applause. Today, I'm pleased to announce Xbox One backward compatibility. That same year, Xbox launched its premium, top of the line, highly customizable Elite controller. 2016 saw the introduction of the Xbox One S, priced between $299 and $399, depending on the storage size, and interestingly, featured a UHD Blu-ray player, something that the PS4 Pro did not have, despite the technology being developed by Sony. Also that year, Microsoft acquired Mixer, placing its first steps into the streaming sphere. Now, the most important year in the Xbox One's lifespan is undoubtedly 2017, the year Xbox truly began to shift its perception in the public eye and lay the foundation for its future values. And it all started with the announcement of Game Pass, a monthly subscription service making a library of about 100 games available for $9.99 a month. Next up, the Kinect was discontinued. Later that year, it launched the Xbox One X, costing $499, 
It outputs 4K resolution with performance improvements and was the most powerful console on the market at the time. Then at E3 2018, Microsoft announced several acquisitions, including Forza Developer Playground Games, Hellblade Senwa's Sacrifice Studio Ninja Theory, State of Decay's Undead Labs, We Happy Few Devs Compulsion Games, and Outer Worlds Obsidian Entertainment. Microsoft also announced the formation of an entirely new studio, The Initiative, Xbox's Quadruple A Studio, comprised of industry veterans from Naughty Dog, Bungie, and Crystal Dynamics. Microsoft also expanded its market with the Xbox Adaptive Controller, opening the doors to a group of people underserved by the gaming industry. Xbox kept the momentum high heading into 2019 with one of its biggest years to date, which saw the launch of the Xbox One S All Digital Edition. It featured no disk drive and was priced at only $249. Meanwhile, Xbox continued to support Game Pass, expanding the service to PC and launching Game Pass Ultimate, which combined the console and PC service as well as Xbox Live Gold. The Elite Series 2 controller also graced the palms of many gamers. E3 that same year could be Xbox's best to date, where Keanu Reeves took the stage to reveal his role in Cyberpunk 2077. You're breathtaking. It also featured a staggering amount of game reveals. Lastly, the indie sweetheart of the industry and developer of Psychonauts 2, Double Fine, joined the Xbox first party family. Oh, and uh, Mixer, Microsoft's game streamer service, makes a deal with one of the world's most popular streamers, Ninja. As of today, I will be streaming exclusively on Mixer. And if 2019 didn't have enough Xbox excitement, its next generation console, the Xbox Series X, was revealed at the Game Awards. Which brings us to 2020, another exciting and historical year for Xbox. Microsoft revealed two models for the Xbox Series consoles, the X and the S both of which feature quick resume, allowing the user to have multiple games running in the background at once, backwards compatibility with its three prior generation of games, the smart delivery initiative that enables folks who bought current gen versions of games to get free next gen upgrades, and the speed of solid state drives. Between Microsoft's momentous effort and focus on backwards compatibility, smart delivery, and offering improvements to past games, Microsoft is blurring the lines between console transitions and redefining how we view console generations. 2020 also saw the launch of Xbox's beta cloud gaming platform. And just months before the launch of its new consoles, Microsoft acquired Bethesda, officially expanding its first party family to a whopping 23 studios, and making it the owner of franchises such as Elder Scrolls, Fallout, Doom, Wolfenstein, Dishonored, and many, many more. That isn't to say Xbox didn't have any losses in 2020. Microsoft officially shut down its gamer streamer service, Mixer, a hard blow for many streamers who had established a brand and audience on the platform. And Halo Infinite, an initial launch title and system seller for the Xbox Series consoles, was delayed into 2021. And that is it. We are all caught up on 21 years of history with the Xbox. With Xbox on the cusp of its fourth generation, it's suffice to say that the story is far from over. To stay up to date with everything the past, present, and future of Xbox, keep it here at GameSpot.